Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Uh, this week I've got a pretty varied video, really. Lots of stuff that I've been wanting to, to get caught up on. So, if lathe, cutter grinder, milling machine, you know, working on the KMT some. So, I hope you enjoy. And let's get started. Got a, this is a Morse taper number four to a Jacobs taper number three. Hopefully you can see that damage on the end of that uh, Jacobs number three. I'm going to try to touch that up just for uh, just for practice, really. Um, all set up here with the table swiveled. Got uh, my two centers. Uh, this is the rotary head and got a drive dog. I'm going to put a little this is white lead and some extreme pressure lubricant. So I'm just going to dab that on the centers here. This is the carbide center that I uh, made not too long ago. It's been held it's been holding up really well. Used it several times and really you can't even tell it's been used. But uh, this one, which is a high speed steel center, you know, probably could use touched up. They don't really last that long, the centers in my experience. So and we got our this is just gonna flop around. You know if I don't uh, tie this I'm gonna use a little piece of copper wire here around the drive dog to hold everything in place while it's rotating. We had a little more than a tenth of run out, about a tenth and a half from what I measured. So it's really not that bad. And it's about as close as I can get it, which is fine for a drill chuck arbor. And I don't want to take too much off this, because I'll have to take some off of both. So I'll have to probably grind this a little shorter. As long as they both match, uh, is really all that matters, I think. When I say both, I'm referring to this arbor that I'm grinding and the chuck that it actually spun in, which is a 18M super chuck. You know, damaged, um, damaged them both. Finished. Looks okay. Okay, that went really well. Um, you know, I ground the whole length of the arbor, cleaned it all up. I probably didn't remove over two or three thousandths, I'm guessing. I just ground till I cleaned up all the way down the taper. I did not try to remove all the low spots, the low damaged areas, because there's really no reason to. I mean, this thing would be way out of spec if I did that. So I didn't remove much, only probably only a couple thousandths, uh, maybe three thousandths if I was, uh, you know, guessing max. So I'll have to clean up this chuck also. These were a pair they spun together and this uh, chuck is damaged down in the bottom of the taper. So this will be junk unless I can try to fix it. Now I have set up on it once and tried to touch off but uh, didn't like my setup and uh, stopped. So I'm going to come up with something maybe we'll show this in the future. Me grinding bore on this, uh, this tapered bore on this uh, chuck. Okay, so you remember the overarm support from, I, I think it was week, you know, we did the bushing on it. We bored it on the K&T mill. Well, here it is, painted. You know, I filmed all of it, but all the process, but it's really not that great to watch, you know, watching somebody sand. Uh, you know, I may stick in a clip here and there, but anyway, it turned out really nice other than, you know, Bozo showed up or just the way the world works for me and probably a lot of you guys is the minute I got it done and it was really nice I went through body filler prime and wet sanding and you know it's a rattle can job but still it turned out nice 
the second that it was dry and I went to pull it off a wire, I had it hanging on the ceiling on a wire where I could rotate it and uh, you know get all the spots on it with the, can with the spray can. It was dry, I was taking it down, I get it, you know, I'm going to set it on the ground and as soon as I get, you know, a foot off the ground I drop it. Of course, you know, that's the way it works. And I uh, put a big scuff on it here and uh, busted a little uh, piece of the paint out here and, you know, several other spots. And that is, from my experience, that's the way the world works. You could drive an old car forever as long as the paint's bad on it and it looks ugly. No one will ever touch it. They, but a limb will get out of your way if you drive by, but the second you paint it, everything in the world is after that car to make it ugly again. At least, that's, I've had two cars that I've done that to, spent a lot of time and money painting them, and one was totaled within three weeks, and the other was scratched pretty bad within, you know, a month or so. So, I just don't paint stuff hardly anymore, because it doesn't pay off, uh, you know, the... It's always, damage is always close behind a paint job. Anyway, I need to make a new lens for this thing. You know, the oil sight lens. Uh, I've got a viewer that's supposed to be sending me some screws for the, for the cover. We're going to replace the wick on it. We'll do this real quick and uh, get this thing, you know, also got to put some oil grooves in this. We'll do that real quick and move on to something else. Okay, so here's the old lens. You can see how yellowed and dirty and scuffed up that is. Now this is just the top off of a, a Pringles bottle or a potato chip bottle. Usually this stuff is uh, PET, I think, is the, the compound, the plastic, and it usually holds up pretty well from my experience. I've used, used this stuff quite a bit on oil you know, covers and stuff. My lathe has some in it that I've had in it since, uh, since I got it. And they're still just as clear as they were, you know, when I when I originally put them in. So I'm just going to mark this out, and use a pair of scissors, and cut it out, and we'll have a new, you know, oil sight. So pretty easy. So let's cut that out and uh, you know install it. Okay, so oil groove, you know, not always as simple as. At least I would have thought. Uh, there's several different options of, uh, you know, types depending on where the pressure is the majority of the time in the bushing. This being an arbor support bushing. You know, this, let's just pretend this is the arbor. You know, it's running. And the cutter is most of the time pushing up right where the oil delivery hole is on this thing. So I don't want to cut a large straight line in that area that would weaken the bushing or or probably promote wear because you had you'd have less contact so I'm gonna put a straight line so that stops short just like this on uh, the lower part of the bushing and then I oil groove around the hole or around the center you know so oil can get from the top to the bottom and then be dispersed along that line that's the idea from what I read that that's probably the most uh, uh, suiting for for this job and I'm gonna use a piece of high-speed steel this is a uh, Williams half inch bar piece of 3 16 high speed steel. I'll just hand grind a radius on that. I don't want sharp edges on my uh, on my oil grooves either that wipe oil off as the shaft rotates in there. I mean, you'd have to read up on it, but there's a lot there's a lot to it. So I'm going to hand grind this. We'll go over the lathe. We'll at least cut the circular part, and then I may have to do the uh, the long groove that stops short. I may either do it on the shaper or I possibly even may do it by hand. I, I just don't know. So I'm going to grind this and we'll, uh, we'll at least cut this, uh, or this round groove in here. Alright, so i got the hole where the oil enters. So I'm just going to take my bar and run it in and, and line it up with that hole. So you know, I'm central of it. got my carriage stop locked. So basically I'm just going to run this thing and run that bar out and uh, you know a little bit stop check it and then do it again until I'm satisfied with the depth
so I think it looks okay. You can, can't see that. No. So that, uh, that worked pretty good. You can see that. So there's where I want my groove along the along the bottom. So I'm going to get set up and uh, flip this cutter around in this indexable high-speed steel bar and uh, try to cut that one. All right. So now I'm going to flip this cutter around where I can drag it back and forth with the carriage. Just gonna flip it like this. And then get up my get my end stop set, my carriage stop set. Probably should probably should grind a little more relief on this thing, or a little more clearance behind that cutting edge. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it'll make much difference. I'll just leave it like that, try it. Alright, so I'm just gonna Mark this out. I just want to. I want my groove to start about a quarter inch, just roughly. You know, it's not that big a deal. About a quarter inch in from each end. Right there. Around about there. Okay, so I got my carriage set up here. Got a hard stop here, and then a dial indicator here, so I can. You know, go in, this is where I stop, where I start, you know, then I feed out, and then engage my cutter, drag it until I hit zero on my mag base. I don't have another carriage stop, I really need to, to make another one of these hard stops. So this is an instance where one would really come in handy. So just going to go back and forth, you know, my groove will probably get a little shorter each time because a chip will build up and it won't break on the ends probably, um, and I'll go back in and clean it up with a hand or a hand file or a burr. I still gotta go in and dress my edges anyway, so that's the idea. Alright, so you probably won't be able to see what's going on. I won't either, but bring it out to feel so a little bit of resistance. It's definitely cutting. forward. Yeah, just a few thou more. And drag it back and forth. Last pass. was expecting to be honest. Alright, so man that went quick. Definitely <laughs> looks a lot better than what I was expecting. I have to get you some good light where you can see it. But... That's all I wanted. So now I'll just clean up them sharp edges. That way it doesn't wipe the oil off as the shaft rolls around and, uh, you know, promotes, so it promotes a good uh, oil film. And that's it. It's exactly what I wanted. So that doesn't happen too often. Okay, so I need to get a piece of wick here. So three inches to the top. We'll do, we'll do at least six inches so we have a bit curled up in here. This is just felt cord that I bought from McMaster. It's actually wicking material supposedly. There we 
Yeah. Good. Mm. Right, there's our new lens. O ring. Indicator. Ring. Lens and cap. So I got some new screws coming. So before I put any oil in this, I'll place these screws. I think that actually looks a hundred times better than what it did. That ugly green, and uh, now it's you know pretty pretty nice. It's presentable anyway. I scuffed it up, you know, like I said, which. That's the way it works. So I'll just clean it up a little more and and uh, you know call it uh, call it good. Turned out pretty nice. It's a lot of work. So I just went over the whole thing basically for with one uh, one skim coat. Then you know sanded it to where I got it pretty good, and then blew it off with compressed air and filled in any little pinholes and stuff. And I'll sand this, prime it, and paint it. So probably about three hours in this thing, you know, total so far, or maybe even more. I'm just wet sanding this, I'm not trying to do a crazy good job on it, but I do want to remove all my sanding marks. So I primed it heavy, and, uh, and I'm just uh, getting out the heavy marks. So primed, and uh, so we filled it. We primed it and then I wet sanded it, and it's pretty good. You know, it's not like show car quality, but uh, you know, none of the rest of the machine will be. So there's no reason to, for me to invest too much time in the appearance of this thing. So, rattle can. See that turns out. That's the large do-all saw. You know, it's been covered up, sitting out here. Haven't done anything to it really yet other than you know, move it in this position but I kind of want to get started on this thing at least a little you know a little at a time and that somebody ran into it with a forklift and I've already disassembled a small portion of it. it this is the coolant tank of course the body of the saw and it fed the pump right here from this NPT this is 3 8 NPT and it fed into here it was just a pipe and uh, Somebody had ran into it with a forklift or something trying to move this thing, and, and it's got a piece of broken uh, MPT fitting in the pump body. So I'm going to be pulling off this pump, and we'll see if we can't you know, get that broken piece out. It may be tough, but uh, I'm going to try. I think, uh, you know, I think we can. Let's get it in the shop and see if uh, we can get that out of there and maybe clean it up a bit. Some of the bolts and stuff are damaged. 
Oh, wow. It'll fall apart. It's a, definitely a super heavy casting, that's for sure. Figured it'd be, you know, a lot thinner than that. Heck, that's a half inch thick there. A brass uh, impeller. Fans hitting the housing. But... To clean all that up, see how that looks. Hmm. Look at that. I have to dry that out. It's soaking wet right now. Huh. Have to keep that. So this is definitely a heavy built, uh, a true industrial grade pump for sure. That's probably bronze and not brass. But uh, you know, I just don't know about the bearings. You know, they don't sound horrible, but they may need replaced but anyway that's that's not that big a deal and anyway, check that out look how thick that thing is now my original thoughts were to uh you know use an easy out but i overestimated the size of my largest one so you know that's not going to work now uh, i can either you know take a sharp punch it's really not in there that far maybe a quarter of an inch screwed in so maybe i could take a sharp punch and fold that up or possibly uh i don't know it's a little recessed um, I was thinking maybe weld, uh, you know, a, sh a shaft to it and screw it out. Uh, let me think about this for a second. I could probably drill it some and weaken it. I just don't know. We'll see. Uh, well, I'll have to think on that. Well, I'm getting set up here on the milling machine. I'm going to try to extract this broken piece of uh, pipe thread with the mill. And I don't have any left-handed drill bits or anything. I really, that's on my list for sure of things that I, that I want to get. But it would take a fairly large one in order to do this 3 8 NPT anyway. But I did find a left-handed helix. It's rusty and, and, you know, beyond repair. But I think that it'll work for this. But the only problem is right now that it's, you know, see how long that is. Definitely longer than a standard R8 call it can accept. So we're going to take it over the cutter grinder. I'm going to cut this in two and hopefully there's still enough life left in this thing to, to pull out this piece of pipe thread. It's a set five eighths. It's actually a three quarter. And uh, this was given to me by a viewer. I forget, I forget who did, but you know, it was in a big box of stuff that I got. So, you know, even though this is a rusty old windmill, you know, it still can be used for some things. Hopefully it will perform the task that we, that we got for it. I should, I don't see why I wouldn't. We'll get everything going. And cut this thing in two. Lined it up by eye. You know, hopefully this old crusty and mill has one more job left in it. There we go. It works. Same 
moved a little. I guess it matters. So, success. To run a tap down on that and clean that out. Alright, so I've been calling this 3 8 NPT. It's actually, actually half. This is my number three Morse uh, twist drill company uh, tap handle. And I love this thing. It was given to me by a viewer some time ago. So I'm just going to just clean this up to where it starts wanting to cut. And back it out. So, nothing but a cleanup job. Here I'm just getting set up to grind some magnetic transfer blocks or parallels that were sent to me by Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools. Everybody, everybody loves Tom. Nice guy. He sent me a, a stack of these. They were rough saw and cut, just bandsaw cut, and uh, they've been sitting in my toolbox for quite some time. So I figured I'd, you know, take a few minutes and you know grind these up now that I got a surface grinder. I'd, Tried a few on the uh, cutter grinder, but you know it's not designed for large flat surfaces, so I figured I better grind them up while I had a good opportunity. You know, the, the surface grinder's been working pretty well. I did redress the chuck, just aggressively dress the wheel with uh, you know, a really quick, quick motion, and then just skimmed the top of that mag chuck seemed to have made quite a bit of difference. I was getting anywhere from about a half thou over six inches to seven inches and uh, you know I've cut that down not in half but close by rough grinding the top of the mag chuck. Now the finish is not as good but in my opinion a nice finish on the top of a mag chuck doesn't mean much. They get scratched up quick and uh, I think the accuracy is more, more important if you ask me. Just messing around, that's all I'm really doing here. I'm trying to, to get some time on this machine under my belt. Since I've had this mill, I've noticed that when I, you know, turn the lead screw to move the table, that it makes a roaring noise. Like it has a, you know, a bad bearing in one end or the other. It's hard, it's really hard to tell by ear uh, where it's coming from. And I've wanted to pull the table off this thing for a while, so I think I'm gonna you know, start doing that. It's also got some issues with the, uh, you know, this handle here and uh, this handle. These are you know, your feed directions uh, for your uh, table. And sometimes they'll engage good, sometimes they won't. You know, sometimes this won't engage like it should, you know, when you when you put that in the middle, it really should be engaged right there. You gotta kind of jiggle them. I, I don't like that. So it's a good excuse to try to fix this thing. And you know, putting off little problems like that usually just leads to bigger ones. So we'll see how far we can get. We're gonna start on this end, tearing it down. You know, who knows how far we'll get. We may get the whole table off. We may not. Let's just start here and see see what happens. I need some bearing numbers. All right, so I've had you know, this handle off and, and this crank, but uh, that's as deep as I've ever been into this thing. We, there goes my tapered pin. We did ream out the tapered pin on this. and uh, you know, Got it working better, but still, still not good enough, if you ask me. It 
is a strong spring clip. Get out of there. Of course, I'll get some pliers. Nut washer. Easy enough. That should come off. There's that. Pull that off. Just the uh, graduation bezel. So it's just got a set screw in it. That's what rides on the inside of that bezel. Why it's keyed also. So, I have to take off these screws and remove this piece. I'm sure it probably comes off something like that. It'll be a good, uh, you know, good uh, time to clean all this stuff up too as I go. Huh, it's, uh, it's actually pretty elaborate in there. Get you a shot of, a shot of that. All right. So this shaft is what runs all the way under the table through the other side. I think I can probably just pull it completely out. I'm not for sure about it, but we have got a brass or bronze fork there, and it runs in a detent um, on this uh, little piece here. So I, I'll probably clean up all these, you know, detents and stuff, and try to make that. Uh, work smoother after years of use. I'm sure uh, you know, we'll probably have some wear on them. I don't know. We'll just have to see. I need to get a punch and drive this pin out and get this fork off. It's starting to rain. That's pretty neat. You got a little uh, hole there. And this looks like maybe it's a little pin. And the cover keeps it in place. That's pretty neat. Pretty clever way of holding that in.
Well, those are big needle bearings. All right, so here's the big caged bearing. I'm glad that's not bad. And then there's the outer race. The, uh, this just rides on the lead screw. And a bronze bushing in here for the power shaft. So, man, I don't even know where you'd find a bearing like that. Pretty, pretty simple, really. Well, that doesn't look very healthy. All that rusty colored grease and stuff. And uh, according to the parts breakdown, there should be two opposing tapered roller bearings in here. This looks like it's the tensioning nut. It's got a bendable block here that will have to come off. And uh, man, I hope these are something I can, you know, access or acquire fairly easily. And, you know, the hope, the hope that there's something that's common or standard. So I'm going to pull this stuff off here, you know, pull this housing and, all, and stuff off and uh, you know, see what the damage is. Well, the bearings are definitely bad and definitely special. Uh. This is the outer. It is a 41125-W Timken. And this is what happens when you pressure wash a machine. Yeah, anytime I ever hear anybody pressure washing them, unless they disassemble them or are extremely careful, I mean, you're asking for trouble. Or let them sit outside in the rain. Anywhere water can get, it will get. And then you buy expensive bearings like this. Special race. Really thick ribbed race. So, you know, definitely not standard. Well, these are definitely the culprit of our rough feeling and noise when I turn the handle. I mean, that's pretty pretty gruesome, really. It's got some bad corrosion in it, and that's just from moisture getting in there and it's setting. So, you know, not a good idea to leave them outside, of course, but sometimes you don't have a choice. But, and this is what happens, this or you pressure wash them. But uh, now I found an anomaly. Both of, these inter or both of these races are the same part number. That's what the manual calls for. But these bearings, it calls for different part numbers. This one, the outer one, calls for a 41125 W. And I'm assuming the W stand, you know, is, is uh, for the cutout. I just, I just don't know. But this one is the same part number. This one, this bearing, should be a 41125 with no W. But uh, now either somebody's been in this before and replaced this bearing, which is what I suspect or the factory had a bunch of these and just used them in place of the uh, you know standard 41125 so that's pretty uh, neat I guess but depending on which one's cheaper the de with the W or without or available will depend on which one I get because this feature is not needed on the on the internal uh, bearing so there they are and those are some old looking bearings for sure with the big uh, big rollers there you go. Well guys, that is it. That is all I can do in this video. It's already too long. It's three days worth of work in a 45 minute video. But I'm making good progress on this thing. You know, the whole reason I took this machine apart is because I didn't like the way that the screw sounded or felt. And uh, you know, we got some mechanical issues. So could I put these back in and use them and it last a lifetime? Yes. Would it be annoying? Yes. And I can't handle that. 
So I did find some new old stock of these bearings. They definitely did not give them away. But you know, I can't put these back in there like that. I would dream about it at night. And uh, you know, I'm not for sure that I'm gonna be able to even get this table off. I'm gonna try, I can believe that. I'm trying to fashion a lift plate to you know find the center of gravity, lift it from there. With this mill in its position, it makes it really tough, plus the equipment that I have. And you could easily damage this mill by doing it wrong. So I'm gonna try not to do it wrong. And uh, that's that's it. You know, fix some of these mechanical issues that I have. And there's quite a few that I did not show, but I will. So huge thanks to the guys who sent something into the channel. I definitely appreciate it and would not be anywhere near where I am without your support. Big thanks to the guys who you know, made a donation in the link in the description of all my videos. You know, that goes to keeping the lights on and you know, stuff like you know, bearings and uh, taking my wife out to lunch on occasion, which I almost never do. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Share the videos on your social media. Help the channel grow. Things have been slow, I think, for everybody lately. So help me out. I really appreciate it. If you need anything, contact me through my email. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. And as always, we'll see you next time.